I'm using the worst team in college football, and today I'll be rebuilding them until we win a championship. Kent State comes in at a 68 overall, and as I'm filming this, they're sitting at 1-8, and eight. but to make things even harder, I can only recruit three stars or below, and they have to reside in Ohio or one of the states touching it. Also, if I fail to complete even just one of these challenges by the end of the video, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter, and it's time to dive into fixing the golden flashes. I don't think I've ever rebuilt a MAC team before, and our conference rank is one of the worst in the game, so even landing three stars recruits is probably a big deal to the program, and it takes us a long time to fully scout a player. One thing we should probably do though is redshirt some of our players, and it's weird to recruit guys when you don't know what their true overall is, but I do need to mention one player. Quarterback Malik Johnson could be good, so I'm hoping we can get the kid out of Michigan to come to Kent State, and our first commit was Wesley Estes, who I know nothing about. Throughout the first year, there were many battles that we had to get some of these recruits, but Malik Johnson ended up not being too difficult, and neither was Juco Bob Fry. It should be no surprise that at the end of the season, and we're sitting at 1-11, and, and our only win came on the road at Ohio. As for the two guys we competed for, we didn't get Sam Ellis, but we did get Matt Williams, and Jaron Lewis would have been fine if he didn't throw so many interceptions. He made sure that he was force-feeding the ball to senior Luke Floria, but he won't be with us next year, so I'm glad our running back is only a junior. There's also no way that Kent State's current head coach doesn't get fired, so that's where I come in to hopefully change how this program progresses. None of the players that are graduating are high overalls, and I have no idea what overall any of these freshmen actually are. We signed almost everybody that we wanted during off-season recruiting, and even though our class came in at number 54 in the country, which means we haven't completed any of these goals yet, but I'm happy with how it turned out, assuming some of these guys are a bit better than they look. Position changes will show everybody's true overall, and I need to see where our quarterback's at, because Malik Johnson is a 69 overall. Juco Bob Fry also becomes a 75 overall wide receiver, but position changes probably won't go well for us, because this realistic mod bases it all on how good your school is, and from what I've seen so far, I'm actually happy with what we got because I was expecting much worse. Our cornerback room is going to be almost empty after this year though and one of the sophomores regressed by three, so it might be a long time before we're able to make a bowl game. Until we get closer to that, it's going to make sense to redshirt our young players, and some of our freshman receivers are very quick. At quarterback, even though he's one overall worse, I'm going to start Jaron Lewis again, and scouting shouldn't be as difficult as it used to be, but it still takes me two weeks to reveal all of their stats. Going into the season, we're the worst overall team, but we aren't projected to be the worst in the country, but we are supposed to finish at the bottom of our division, and our opening game is at Tennessee, so I think we all know how that was going to go, and I don't know why we have such a tough schedule to start the year, but it's not looking good. One positive, though, is I did find multiple gyms for us to chase after, and it's not going to be easy to beat out these bigger schools, but we're going to try our best. Three-star cornerback Richie Hall from Kentucky would start all four years for us, and I can finally scout players fully with just one click. That's going to make it so much easier to find solid talent, and 6'5 Juco Nate Ware is a great example. We're opening up MAC conference play against Ball State, and they're going to beat us by 25, and the following week at winless Central Michigan, we're going to get beat by 11. I should probably jump into one, and everybody's going to visit against Toledo, but they're 15 overalls better than us, so this could be very rough, and I'm surprised that we even have that many fans in the crowd. Back when I lived in Kentucky, I attended some Miami, Ohio games, and they were even decent, but that stadium was never more than half full, and we are actually moving it on our first drive, but that ball's knocked away. It seemed like it was put almost exactly where it needed to be, and Jaron Lewis should be starting for us at least for the next two seasons, so I'm hoping for the best on 4th and 5, and that was a perfect ball. We need to at least get points out of this first drive, and with a little bit of play action, we're going to have time to get it to Fry. So the Juco just made his first snag for us, and we're going to go with the halfback screen because I don't think they're expecting it. Thomas should be able to get us into the end zone first. And Kai Thomas is also our highest overall player, so we are probably going to have to lean on him for the rest of the year. It's going to take us performing better than we ever had before if we're going to surprise the world, but somehow 87 is wide open up the middle, and I didn't think our 68 overall offense was going to come out playing this well, but we're about to score again, and this is a football that you have got to hang on to. It's now third and ten, and they went with man-to-man -man coverage where Fry's gonna cook that corner, so these visiting recruits have to be impressed with the effort we're putting on against Toledo, and so far, this has been the best game of Jaron Lewis's career, and he's about to find Bob Fry for another touchdown. He's so open. Toledo's defense hasn't even stopped us one time today, and approaching the end of the third quarter, we still have a seven-point lead as we need to pick up this third and seven, and we have a real chance of actually winning. It's about time we try to start milking the clock with Kai Thomas in our rushing attack. So there's only two minutes left by the time that it's third and goal, and that's game. We have a two possession lead with not much time remaining, so I'd expect that we wouldn't choke, and we just have to recover this onside kick, which we are not gonna do. I am gonna lose my mind. We are in the process of choking. They got that throw out and just make a tackle on 23. He is still up and going. That is another shedded tackle. Come on. To make matters worse, we're also getting hit with a face mask, and we're about to choke our 14 point lead. This went from an amazing performance to what would be super. Super 
embarrassing in front of all of these visiting recruits. And we have 22 seconds to try and get in field goal range. Jaron Lewis sees that everybody is locked up, so he can only go with his legs, and that gets us to about the 35. He can't continue to run, though. We're going to have to pass for something, and I might as well try to go with the wheel route, which is going to be underthrown into a pick. And I just wanted to win our first game of this rebuild, but I don't think it's going to happen. Now we're in overtime, and Jaron Lewis is doing a lot. But for some reason, he's not in the game. I guess he got injured, and that means Garbin, our backup's going to have to throw for a touchdown. The problem is I think Toledo is about to respond back, and Jaron Lewis is out for the game with a mild concussion, so our upset hopes are a lot less likely, but we could get a goal line hold here. It's third and about six or seven, so I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get in. We just got to make a tackle making them short, and they're settling for a field goal to go up three. Chandler Garbin already made one good throw, but he's going to need a few more of them, and we can win this game with a touchdown in overtime. Let's go, Kai Thomas. Let's get more. With all of the visiting recruits, this would be a program-changing result, and we are just inches away from sealing it. I don't know how we pulled it off, but for the MAC conference, this is a shocking result, and we got two corners to commit, including Richie Hall and Steve Greco, who's an athlete that can play in multiple positions. No matter what happens the rest of the year, I am so happy with the result that we just got, and now I'm focused on targeting all of these high 60 overalls, JUCOs, or low 70 overalls. There's a mixture of all three, but they're going to visit against Youngstown State, and I'm hoping that we're able to pull that one off as well, because if we do, I might be able to keep my job. Right now, my security is not the best, but there's a chance I bring in a really good recruiting class, and if I do that, there's no reason to fire me. On paper, we are the better team because they're an FCS school, but here in the third quarter, we are all tied up at 10, and that is very disappointing to see. It just doesn't seem like we're the same team that was able to pull off the upset against Toledo a few weeks ago, and again, with three minutes left, it is all tied up, this time at 17, so we are going to have to score on this drive, and it's not happening. I guess the most we can hope for is this field goal is good, and it is, but I just realized that both our kicker and our punter are seniors, and I didn't recruit a new one, and how on earth has nobody been able to make a tackle on 84 yet? Come on, guys. Oh my gosh, he is going to break free. I cannot believe that they just scored on that, and we have to drive down the field and score a touchdown if we want to avoid losing to an FCS school. A loss here would almost guarantee that we get none of the prospects we're going after, and on third and seven, we're going to go with the halfback slip screen, but Kai Thomas is getting smothered. It all comes down to this, and I don't know if I want to take it to him, but we're going right back. He's got to die for the first, and Jaron Lewis is a junior, so he needs to be able to impress in the final minutes, because that's why we have him out there for all of his experience, and that's not going to be caught. I feel like we keep getting stuck on these third and longs. Bob Fry's going to have to come up clutch for us, and with only eight seconds remaining, there's probably two plays left. We're going back to him. It wasn't a good idea, but it all comes down to this, and if this slant isn't a touchdown, it's over, but he gets it. I have no idea how we came away with that. He was not open at all, but the Youngstown State safety just didn't make a play on the ball, and we just avoided an embarrassing upset. Jaron Lewis didn't even have a bad game, but it still came down to the final play, and I'm just thrilled to see all of these commits. As of right now, my job security is also good, but we have three different matchups to end the year, and against Bowling Green, we get the win. That's against our rivals, and we did lose to our other rivals, Akron, but it's still a massive result for us, and in our final game against Buffalo, we lose by 17. To be honest, for season two with the worst team in the game, this is not bad at all, and we still need Jaron Lewis to limit his turnovers. It works out for a number one receiver because they get a ton of targets, but we could have gotten more wins, and we're gonna have to say goodbye to senior Kai Thomas. What's important was I kept my job for another year, and nobody transferred out, so we only lost seniors to graduation. We obviously didn't have anybody drafted into the NFL, and we didn't come close to finishing with a top 35 class, so we still haven't knocked anything off of our challenges list, but I think our recruiting class ranking was very disrespectful because these players are a lot better than last year's. Juco sophomore Steve Greco is gonna play both wide receiver and corner for us, and nothing stuck out to me too much in training results until I saw that Jaron Lewis regressed while Malik Johnson went up by five. That means that the redshirt freshman is going to be starting for us, and I'm surprised that we're still projected to be the second worst team in the country. When you look at team overalls, it makes sense because we're the worst, but we won three games last season, and for recruiting, there's not that many prospects that I'm interested in, but 75 overall athlete Jeremy Williams can play almost anywhere, so if we're going to land anybody, I want it to be him. I also want to see if we can start the year out with a win, and I'm ready to see our new freshman quarterback. Malik Johnson has a bunch of different targets he can throw to, and I've recruited almost all of them, so I have high expectations for this offense, and Steve Greco is going to reel in a nice catch. To finish it off, we have Wesley Estes, who's also a freshman, but our defense could be a problem for us, as Western Kentucky's already gone down the field twice, and that should have been an interception, but unfortunately it wasn't, and approaching the end of the third quarter, we're trailing, and like I said, it would be our defense has been the main problem, as they cannot get many stops. It also doesn't help that Wesley Estes bruised his ribs, but if we can prevent Western Kentucky from from not picking up this third and long, we will get the ball back, and of course, Barry's just cooking our man coverage again. I know this team 
is young, but it's just been frustrating to play defense and they should have caught that ball. I'd expect them to still hold on to their lead, but we could get a stop on third and goal and they're short. So it is not fully over just yet. We would need to score extremely quick, but there is a possibility and I'm gonna try to hit that deep post over the middle to fry and he dropped the ball. I'm not saying that would have been game changing, but that is incredibly frustrating and we are gonna find him on fourth and 10. And if we're gonna rely on him, the seniors just gotta be better. I can't believe Fisher got open there, but we are moving down the field and he is gonna catch this touchdown. We have to force a three and out, but we do have a chance in this game and I am sending everybody up the middle to stop the run. I don't think the computer's dumb enough to pass on third and long, but they actually are and we could get a stop sooner, but they find somebody open and that is gonna seal the game. Our comeback hopes fell short in the end and I highly doubt that number one Ohio State's gonna show us any mercy, but they only beat us by 28. Against an FCS school, Southern Illinois, the following week, we are going to lose by seven and I might as well only focus on recruiting for the rest of the year. Plus 10 gym Alfred Dingle is insane and I hope he can be a part of our future because our current team is not doing well. Last year we won three games but so far this season it feels like we're not going to win a single one and it's because I'm starting freshman Malik Johnson so I'm going to give Jaron Lewis another shot. We're going to need to see his experience as a senior against Western Michigan because beating them during visit week is the only way I'm going to have a chance at landing any of these guys. I'm hoping the quarterback change lifts this team up and it seems like it's going to be a rainy day so we'll see how we do here at home at Dick Stadium which I just realized was our stadium's name. At least we held them to a field goal on their first drive and for Jaron Lewis's first drive back he's going to go out and miss three straight passes. As the quarter would go on he'd gel a bit better with some of these new wide receivers but our defense is so bad and on this long third and goal we're going to give up another touchdown. I will say with Jaron Lewis in the game the offense is doing better and we're trailing with a few minutes remaining but we have a chance to take a lead with this run. This game has gone back and forth but we have an opportunity on third and five to get the stop but what happened with Hall right there? He could have picked it off but it glitched him out and I swear the game just cheated against me. We can still hold them on the goal line but it's going to be tough on third and three their running back gets a little bit tripped up so it is fourth and two and they go with the option run and I just didn't have enough guys over there to stop it. It is time for a Jaron Lewis legacy drive. Will he be able to lead us down the field? And one of the things I've missed so much about him is I know he's able to scramble so if I didn't want to take that check down in bounds I can just run around and get about 15. We cannot go winless this season so we really need to win this one. I see triangle but he moved and it's going to be picked. We still have all three of our timeouts but that is so frustrating and we have a chance to get the ball back but there's only going to be about 40 seconds remaining and they're going to run for the first down. That is it. We started as the worst team in the country and somehow we're regressing from last year as against Miami, Ohio. We're going to get pounded. Even with everything going as bad as it has, we did land Jeremy Williams and I don't even want to see our result against Ohio because I just know that it's going to be rough. The Jaron Lewis experiment was interesting but it's time to put Malik Johnson back in and if we're ever going to beat anybody, it's going to be Eastern Michigan who we top off by three. I'm most likely still going to get fired but that result was awesome and against Bowling Green they destroy us. I do have some good news though as athlete Alfred Dingle committed to Kent State and I think all four of these battles are going to run into the off season. One of our final matchups is against our biggest rivals Akron and we actually took them down which resulted in a ton of different commitments. The high overalls might be Juco's but they're still going to instantly start for us and there's a slight chance I don't get fired but to guarantee that we have to beat Buffalo. This is the first road game I've jumped into and approaching halftime we're all tied up at 14 but we have an opportunity to take the lead on this drive and that is going to be a fumble that they're going to recover. Juco sophomore Steve Greco really just gave that one away and instead of us ending the first half with a touchdown it seems like it might be Buffalo instead. I don't know what to do about that but they're going to go with the run and we are going to hold them short so they're only going to get a field goal out of it and on this massive fourth and one Wesley Estes is going to avoid the defensive tackle to get the first. We cannot risk me getting fired at this point in the rebuild. It would set us back even more years and our tight end is going to break two tackles. He is a monster and I wish he wasn't a senior because I want someone like him around in the future. Also, Nate Ware just showed everybody else how to actually catch and with a few minutes left, Buffalo needs to pick this up but that throw was terrible. I can't believe they're opting to punt in this situation because with a first down or two, we can win this game and Wesley Estes is going to get at least six. This is a big down and I think our best options just take it to Bob Fry who's going to run over that player and get the first. It won't be enough to entirely seal it, but it's going to get us pretty dang close. And with two more yards, we're going to go three and nine again. And there we go. We got a little lucky with the spot, but I'll take it. And Bob Fry is going to be missed next year. The Juco could only play two seasons for us. And compared to our other receivers, he wasn't very good, but he had some clutch plays and our quarterbacks need some improvement. As for running backs, I think Wesley Estes was solid for a freshman. And it is so nice to not be the worst team in the MAC. The bar is also just high enough to where I'll keep my job. And we still haven't had anybody transfer out as the only players leaving are graduates. We also got a couple transfers in, but I'm only going to take Kevin Pitts. And 
I'm going all in on getting 76 overall tackle Robert Bowling, so I'm thrilled to see we got him along with Cortez Brown, and it feels like this class is even better than the one that we pulled in last year, but it's ranked even lower coming in at 88. We have five freshman athletes to move around now, and Fred Howard might say he's only a 66, but he becomes a 75 halfback. I also think Jeremy Williams is our future quarterback, and Alfred Dingle is an amazing free safety. Now for the most important stage, player progression, and who I'm really looking for is Malik Johnson, who is up to a 76. As for the running back position, I don't think we're going to start Wesley Estes, because freshman Fred Howard is even better, and I'm excited for this season. Going into the year, we're no longer projected to be one of the worst teams, and we're up to a 72 overall. As for recruiting, I've decided that we're going to shoot for some higher overalls, but I doubt we're going to end up landing any of them, and I feel like I need to play our season opener. We lost to Southern Illinois last year in Sim, so I have to make sure that that does not happen again. This needs to be an interception early on, and no way that they just caught that and came down with it. This is exactly why I have to hop in because the computer's going to cheat and they've already got three points on the scoreboard, but we're about to go down and get seven. Malik Johnson's in his second year, so he should have major improvements as he's already doing well. And it's time to see our freshman running back take this into the end zone. I need to remember to change Fred Howard's number, but I have other things to worry about because approaching halftime, we are losing 19 to seven. We also just didn't pick up that fourth down because of a drop. And I'm starting to think that this team is never going to improve. We are playing in FCS school right now. And on third and 15, I'm going to try to pick this up, but there's a good chance it's just going down. Southern Illinois might have our number and I'm not proud to admit it, but no matter how well Malik Johnson throws the ball, nobody catches it. So we might as well resort to handing it off every play. Our defense is so bad as we are about to give up another touchdown. And if we don't get this fourth and eight, the entire game is over for us. So we're going for the crossing route and it's dropped again. I have had it with this team and I'm about to make a big change. Malik Johnson will no longer be our future as I'm handing it over to Jeremy Williams. And instead of having an air raid attack, I'm switching our offense over to the spread with a bit of a pass heavy feel. Obviously, I'm not expecting us to do well against Kentucky, who's ranked number 12, but we just beat them. And that was the last thing I was expecting, but Jeremy Williams might have had one of the best Kent State debuts ever. I also just found 74 overall defensive end Jim Tom Alexander. So even though none of these battles for the top guys are going our way, I'm feeling a lot better about this rebuild, but I wouldn't be surprised if we lost to Youngstown State and it was close. Sometimes the sim engine on this game gives you the most random of results and we are going to lose to Central Michigan and we're also getting locked out on Gerald Nelson. So to bounce back, I'm scheduling everybody for a visit against Ball State and I'm ready to beat a 3-1 team at Dick Stadium. There's a lot more fans here than I'd ever expect. So that one fluky sim win over Kentucky has us trending in the right direction, but we also have a new quarterback and Nate Ware continues to improve as a wide receiver. The main reason we put Jeremy Williams in though is because we want to run the read option and that is going to result in another first. So I think switching up our offense was the right move as he is so much better. We do have a problem though as we have not scored since then in the first quarter and Ball State has an opportunity to reach the end zone here on third and goal which they do. Fred Howard got put out with a high ankle sprain injury and our offense hasn't been the same ever since that happened against Central Michigan and by the end of the third quarter we still had seven so with a few minutes remaining we need to go for it on fourth down and we finally held on but I'm concerned for the rest of the season as the offense has definitely been much different without our starting running back that's finally a good throw and it's taken all day to start catching the right way and making the right throws again but I'm very happy with how the team's performing if we're going to tie it up at 14. By the end of regulation, it was still tied up and we're on defense first where I'm hoping we can get a stop and their quarterback's just taking a sack. Second and 11, they're going with a weird option run and nobody's over there on Christian Davis. This could be bad news. We are finally going to make him go down, but he has been a pain to stop and we need to get a goal line hold. Oliver Bullitt brings him down and I rarely point out defensive players, but he has four sacks. Our defensive line has been eating all day. We just have to stop Christian Davis and we can't. So I've decided decided that if we score on this drive, we are going for the two-point conversion, and that's almost picked. While we've had good pass defense, they've had the good run defense, so I'm surprised that this one might work to Williams, but he only has 78 speed, so he couldn't seal the outside edge, and that just got picked out of a sack. You've got to be joking. This is like one of the rarest things that could happen on NCAA football, but we are dropping to two and three, and we just can't win a game at home. The entire year just feels like a lost cause, and at Miami, Ohio, we were never going to beat them, because they were five and one, and we somehow beat Kentucky. Kentucky, but we struggle against Mac schools. I honestly couldn't tell you why these six players even committed to Kent State, but we are coming off a win against Ohio, and we're the favorites on paper against Eastern Michigan, so that is the result we were looking for. My favorite team got revenge on us, though, by stealing Brandon Landry from us, and I really wanted him because I don't think we're going to land any of these three guys. What's surprising is with four games left in the season, we are second in our division, but we're about to face undefeated Northern Illinois, so that should end our good run. If we're able to take down our rivals Bowling Green, we will have have a chance at making
making a bowl game, and I've been waiting so long to play against our other rivals, Akron. Their stadium is only 10 miles away from ours, and if we made a bowl game this year, that would change our future trajectory. So we desperately need to get a stop on fourth and one, and that's not happening. That's very frustrating, but you know what? It'll be all right. We're going to roll around and find Chris Palmer, and he's going to truck a guy. And I really wish we had our starting running back, but he's still injured. Fred Howard's had a high ankle sprain all year, and Wesley Estes really struggles. So we're going to go with the quarterback wrap. And later on in the second half, I am going for it on a little bit of a fourth and long. We're going to float it to Nate Ware, who somehow pulled that in. Thank goodness. The junior wide receiver has improved so much this season, and I wish our offense was a little bit more consistent because I'm pretty sure if we figured that out, we would find ourselves winning nine or 10 games. We've lost a lot of close battles, and we also have our future at quarterback. This is going to be a beautiful pitch from him to get the touchdown, but Akron would be the next team to get onto the board, and I think we're going to have Greco deep. This is on third and three, and it's dropped. Out of pure frustration, I am going for it, which was not the right move. Nate Ware catches it, though, and I feel like he's the only player I can trust to consistently reel it in, but I still have to spread it around, and I don't know how Steve Greco holds onto that ball, but not the last one. For these first four years, that's been by far our biggest issue. We also are not getting in a pass rush on this play, but we are going to stop them from getting the first, and this is our chance to take the lead. I see that we have Steve Greco deep, and he finally reels it in. I don't want to talk about the fact that I accidentally just ran out of bounds, and I swear, if that prevents us from getting a touchdown, I'm going to feel like an idiot. Come on, Williams, please make up for it. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. He was just moving very quick, and now we need this to somehow go our way, but me being terrible at this game has forced us to a field goal, and I can no longer blame it on the fact that we're not catching balls because we did. On 4th and 13, we're playing a deep coverage, and they tried to run it on us for some reason, so now we get to run it on them to secure our win, and this is going to get close. If we don't get this 3rd and 2, our 1 and 9 rivals can still get the ball back, but I trust Williams to fight for it, and we have won the game. I'm very glad that we were able to hold on, and we're also bowl eligible for the first time, so things are trending upwards here at Kent State, and against Buffalo, we lost in overtime. We've also been locked out from Dwayne Kearney in the last week, but we made our bowl against Boise State, and for a freshman, Jeremy Williams was awesome. Not only was he our leading passer, but he was also our leading rusher, and he did a pretty good job of spreading the ball around to multiple guys. Sophomore linebacker Yusuf Means also put up some wild stats, but what would really make this year sweet is if we won our bowl, and I don't know if Boise State just didn't care or what, but we played amazing against them. Jeremy Williams has already thrown for three touchdowns, and this one's going to be his fourth, but what's really been game-changing has been our defense, and it is full of a bunch of young guys, which makes me excited about next season. I mean, the Broncos have only gotten three field goals, and we won our bowl game by a sizable margin. Kent State made the right decision in not firing me, because as you can see, I've gotten an extension, and we're only losing 10 players to graduation, with a few of them being starters. We still haven't had anybody drafted, but we have an opportunity to land the two corners that I really won, and we got both of them to commit. I'm not sure if we're ever going to sign a top 35 class, and we haven't come close to touching one of these challenges yet, but I'm very happy with everybody coming in, including Josh Davis, who I just got for fun. He makes our quarterback room have the best depth for any position, and athlete Kevin Williams can play almost anywhere, but I think I'm going to move him over to tight end just for the time being. As for training results, I'm nervous to hop into these, but I'm seeing that we had a plus eight at center, and it looks like Jeremy Williams went up six. Not every position group trended in the right direction, but enough of them improved to the point where we should still have a really solid year. Right now, we're projected to be a top 100 team, and it might be a long shot, but we could win the MAC this season. Our team overall is up to a 77, and I swear, if we lose to Southern Illinois for the third year in a row, I'm going to lose my mind, but we just beat them. Since we got the win, I'm happy with that start, and I'm also happy to find two JUCOs that are really good, because both of them play wide receiver, and we desperately need their help. At the end of the year, all three of our top guys are graduating, so it's crucial that we land them, and I'm hoping we can win at Kentucky again, but I wasn't expecting it. We're not going to get the fluky result two years in a row, but we are going to lose to Youngstown State, and now I'm not very confident about getting a win to open up MAC conference play against Toledo, but we still do. If I've learned anything, it's that I need to stop scheduling FCS schools, and I'm going to have everybody visit next week against Central Michigan. They're 1-3, and three, so we should handle them with ease, and I'm ready to put on a good show for the visiting recruits at Dick Stadium, but I'm disappointed to say that once again, we are missing our starting running back. Fred Howard just can't stay on the field, and that makes our offense so much worse. We have to pick this up, though, and that isn't an accurate throw. Luckily, here in the second quarter, we're going to score a touchdown, and although our offense hasn't been very impressive, our defense has. Central Michigan hasn't been able to do a thing all day, as here in the third quarter, they're not picking it up, and they still only have three points. Now, I'm not sure if our offensive performance has been impressive enough to get the visiting recruits to commit, but we have tried our best, and look at Palmer go. At the end of the day, I'm just happy that we won, and it's awesome to see all the recruits I wanted to commit, including 79 overall center Antoine 
Howard, but we really do need to score more if we're going to take further strides forward as a program and we beat Miami, Ohio. Even if we're picking up close wins, I'm going to take them. Against Ohio, we lose by four though, and thankfully we're still on pace to make the MAC Conference Championship, but if we drop something stupid like at winless Eastern Michigan, that would all change, and thankfully we didn't. I'm still able to hop into two more games, but we have massive overall advantages over some of these teams, so I'm confident in Sim, but maybe I shouldn't be. Now, unless we beat Buffalo and Akron, we're going to lose our division, and those two games come after the Bowling Green one, so we're going to have to Sim to it where we thankfully get the win. Last year, Akron was 1-9, and nine, so they've really turned it around, and on the first play of the game, they're going with a little bit of man coverage. I see Corey Palmer has toasted the guy on him, and he is going to get around that safety. This is the perfect start. He's taking it to the crib. This place is as loud as it can possibly get in a max stadium as we had a great start, but we're giving up a bomb to Thurman, and they almost did the same thing. This time on third and long, I'm going to have everybody play a bit deeper, and I think it's going to work to hold them to a field goal if we could have made a tackle, but instead, I think we're about to give up a touchdown, and this is going to turn into a classic. We keep trading touchdowns back and forth, and I see the corner routes open, but I hit the wrong button, and that's going to be an interception for Akron. We are fighting for a spot in the MAC championship with our rivals that are just 10 miles away from our school, and we need to get in some pressure. We cannot collapse this late into the year. We need to keep having success, and I'm going for the deep bomb to our senior wide receiver who comes down with it. That is how you end the first quarter, and Nate Ware is so good that I'm going to look back in his direction in the back of the end zone, but they got to it. This is such an important third down, even though it's early on, and I think we've outrun that cornerback, but Palmer just wasn't able to get a foot down, and we've made multiple costly mistakes that could cost us the game. With a couple minutes left in the second quarter, they go with the run on third down, and we should get the stop. And I really want to end this first half with points of some sort. We're going to need a miracle, though, and I don't think that throw is going to outrun the safety, but Palmer still catches the football. Corey Palmer has two catches today, and they have both been game-changing as he looks to get his third for another touchdown. We ended the first half in the perfect way, and now they're on a third and ten where they might be short, and we're so fortunate that it was marked as a fourth and inches. That's going to keep it tied up at 24, and Fred Howard's been injured all year, but he has played a little bit in this game, but his pulled groin continues to irritate him, and with just a few minutes remaining, it's no surprise that he's not out there on the field, but Palmer might have had something deep, and that was knocked away. It was a very offensive first half, but this second half has been brutal for all offenses, but of course we give that up, and if we don't stop Akron soon, we're going to be in a ton of trouble. It could be worse as they haven't been running down the clock, and on third and seven, we're going to get the sack, so that is a huge play, because all they can do is attempt the long field goal, and there's no way that was going in. We are so close to surviving against our rivals. We have just got to move the ball down the field, and Greco has finally broken free. I have not seen this guy make a play for what seems like years, but that's exactly what we needed, and on this fourth and one, I don't know what type of play this is, but we need to make a tackle on the quarterback, and Hall is not going to do it in time. The computer looks so lost right there, and they keep going with these quarterback runs, so now they've had to put their backup in the game because their starter got hurt, but he is slinging it. How successful this fourth season is all depends on how this game ends, and we cannot miss out on making the MAC championship. Fortunately, we just got a massive sack, and they didn't even burn their final timeout, so now they only have a few seconds remaining. We're gonna hit them, and this thing better not go to overtime on a Hail Mary. There's like seven dudes over there. We're gonna intercept it. I'm very happy to seal it over our rivals, and having someone like Corey Palmer was huge. Even though he's only our slot receiver, he made some amazing plays, and now we have to go out and beat Buffalo. They have the home field advantage for this matchup, but as of right now, Fred Howard is out there on the field for us, and I'm going to try to make a play here to Corey Palmer just like we did to open up the last game, and it looks like we're getting a huge gain. That is exactly how we want to start it out against Buffalo, and Fred Howard's not getting the edge, so our best option is probably to just settle for a field goal, and it paid off because then we would get an interception and follow it up with a touchdown. Defense was not a factor in the last one against Akron, but I think it'll be in this one. It's third and 11, and we tried to make a tackle, but we couldn't. So Buffalo's drive has stayed alive for a little bit longer, and we sent a blitz which was a bad move because Clement is going to break free and I don't know if Hall is able to catch him in time. If any of our guys knew how to wrap it up the proper way, none of that would have happened. But now we're sitting here in a one possession game and our offensive line almost broke down there, but Williams escaped and got it to Ware. I don't know what Nate Ware did to improve this much, but he has to be the best receiver in the MAC. And I want to make the MAC conference championship so bad. We've gotten them to another third down, but our defensive line can knock it in in time. And that's another big gain we're giving up. Because of our defense, midway through the third quarter, we are about to go down by seven. And it's no surprise that Fred Howard isn't in the game because once again, he got hurt. So we're just going to need to start running the ball a bit better. Every time we need this guy, he gets injured. And I really shouldn't be attempting a deep shot in this situation, but I still want to go for it. I'm going to escape around the defensive line and Palmer just broke free from the safety. I don't know why the safety left him that open, but he just decided
decided after running with him for a bit that he didn't want to guard him. And this is exactly what we need to respond back to Buffalo. This is the biggest game of the rebuild. So I'm putting a lot of emphasis on it on third and 19 that needs to be intercepted, but at least we did force a stop. And on third and 10, I do want to take a deep shot to where I think he is the speed to outrun that corner. And I was correct as he is going to get all the way to the one. He's one of the best receivers I've ever had, but a missed extra point and a kick return for a touchdown later, we find ourselves down by one point to the Bulls and we're not getting it. I'm hoping this flag from the ref can bail us out, but it was just clipping on us. And we're going to have to trust our defense to get us the ball back and hope that this punt takes the right type of bounce. The returner wasn't expecting it to go that way. And we could get them off the field here on third and eight, but I'm stuck on the defensive tackle. There's way too much time and the running back was open the entire play. The MAC conference championship is so close, but they might be able to put it out of reach as Buffalo gets another 20 yards. We're going to have to start calling timeout soon. And I think we're going to force a third down with this tackle, but they could run it or pass it here. And I wasn't expecting the pass. I think they had somebody wide open on the corner route. We get the sack. We are so lucky their quarterback did not make the right read there. And it's short. So even though we don't deserve it, all we have to do is score one more point. And you know that I have to try to get us in field goal range by going to Palmer. We might as well take this one to the house. That was such a quick turnaround for this team. And now we're going to go to where for the two pointer. And it's a third and 10 for Buffalo where they are going to get somebody open on the corner route, but it's dropped. I'm pretty sure that is the first time throughout this entire film session where a drop has benefited us and we are going to get the defensive stop. So it has been a long five years, but we have taken Kent State back to the MAC championship. It was a close call, but we did it in the end. And our opponent is seven and five Central Michigan, who we already beat. I have a good feeling going into this game that we're going to take it home. But before we see how that unfolds, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks, where you simply pick higher or lower on player projections. And this week, I'm trusting Judkins to get a touchdown versus Georgia because he has been racking them up while also fading Brady Cook versus Tennessee. If you add more players, you can win up to 25 times your money, but I'm sticking with these two and putting in 25 to hopefully win 75. I can also get you a deposit match up to $100 on prize picks, so use promo code BOARD when you sign up and they'll match up to $100, assuming you reside in one of the 31 states they're available in. Now let's see if we can win our first conference championship, and we need to get them off the field before they reach the end zone, and I think we're going to have a chance to do that on this third and six where we get the sack. Our offense can be amazing, so I will take it, because this week everybody's healthy, and I plan on trying to score on almost every single drive. We have the talent to do that, and I don't want to have to rely on our defense later on in the game. We're already going to feed it into where, and they're going to have to put a ton of dudes on him if they plan on stopping him today. Well, they're already down to our five-yard line again, so you can tell that our defense is struggling a lot, but that's okay because we're getting the ball back, and this is going to be the Nate Ware game. I see the man-to-man -man coverage. I'm going to take it to him. He's going to spin it out, and he shedded that tackle from that safety. I think he has the speed to take this to the house. What a play from him and I can't believe he just pulled that off. I am really going to miss him next season when he graduates, but we're going to enjoy him while we have him, and that's a big defensive hold. It's time to switch it up with a little bit of play action now that we have the ball back on offense, and there's no way I just ran into a safety. I don't know what I was thinking there, but we're lucky our defense has been so, so clutch, and I'm disappointed in Jeremy Williams for running backwards in that safety, but he has made up for it on this drive because we've just run the option down their throats, and they haven't stopped it. That's going to give us a nine-point lead, and I would really love if we're able to get them off the field. Here they go with the halfback screen and we do. It might have taken us a bit to take control of this game, but we have done that here in the third quarter. And going into the fourth, we're in a good position. We're not far away from scoring another touchdown and we are going to have wear on the corner route for it. So we're one fourth and goal stop away from getting the win and we didn't make the tackle. Central Michigan should not be in it right now and we stop them on the two pointer, but there's still a few minutes remaining and they do have all of their timeouts. All it'll take is one first down to seal it, but that's still something we have to get. And I've never wanted a conference championship more. We have to get this first down. If Fred Howard's going to be healthy, it is going to him and that is going to be it. We have done it. So just enjoy as we get to celebrate our feet and getting this team into the 12 team playoffs is going to be a whole other battle. We still have to win a national championship with Kent State and I have a feeling this isn't the first MAC championship we're going to get because we're going to get at least a few more while trying to complete these other challenges and our bowl game is against Iowa. Jeremy Williams was fourth in the country in passing yards and he really improved a ton from his freshman year as he also rushed for almost a thousand yards. Nate Ware was the best for us in game, but Steve Greco put up the best stats. And I have a feeling that this isn't going to go well. So we'll see how we do in our bowl. And I didn't think that starting the second quarter, we would have a seven point lead with a chance to go up by 14. Williams is going to truck an Iowa defender. And Jeremy Williams literally plays with no fear at all. Even in NCAA football, the Hawkeyes offense has made our defense look really good. And he just stepped out of bounds there. So they still haven't scored a touchdown on our defense. With about a minute and a half remaining, they're trying to again and 
and we just have to hold them on third and 15. And to be honest, their best move here would just be kicking a field goal and trying to get the defensive stop because they couldn't do anything all day against the defense that got destroyed in the MAC. I don't know what it is about bowl games, but we seem to play very well in them, and I'll gladly take this one over Iowa. Jeremy Williams still has at least a year left with us, and he's already put himself in the school record books, plus changed the entire trajectory of this rebuild. To make things even better, we just got a level 27 offensive coordinator, but for the first time, we have two players transferring out, and I can't believe that Nate Ware isn't getting drafted. He's 6'5 and put up some pretty crazy numbers, but we haven't put anybody in the NFL with Kent State yet, and I'd be stunned if we pulled in all four of these prospects, but there is a chance. That is exactly how you end off-season recruiting, and our classes are starting to get better as this one finished inside the top 40, and maybe next year we'll be able to sign one in the top 35. Even though some of the highest overalls are JUCOs, I'm very happy with all the players we were able to bring in, and having Jerry Bowman at wide receiver will make a massive difference. 69 overall Dan Jackson also becomes a 75 halfback, and with these training results, we have an 89 overall on our team. Besides our one game versus Ohio State, this schedule isn't too bad, and I would love to get ranked this year, which would hopefully improve the max conference prestige. There's a decent chance that happens because we're starting the season at number 51, and for the first time, we are the favorites to win the conference. As for recruiting, I wasn't too excited about many of these prospects until I found plus 10 Jim Chris Thompson, who is a 77 halfback, and it's unfortunate that our first game is at Ohio State. I'm definitely curious to see how we match up with them, but to be honest, I'm just hoping we don't get blown out, and this gives Jeremy Williams a chance to put himself on the map, but he has a bunch of new receivers, so it could be tough. Surprisingly, our first drive is still going on as we have just run the ball down their throats, and the only way we're going to be in a position where we could potentially upset Ohio State is if we're able to control the tempo. We're going to hit him with a little bit of a halfback screen to Fred Howard. They weren't expecting it, and that's going to put us on the board first. So Kent State is putting on a fight already, and if we would have gotten in any pressure, we might have gotten a sack, but they had too much time. Scoring for them has been a little bit too easy as he's wide open, and we could really use this third and 14 as I'm going to try to hit him over the middle to Allen and he holds on. The longer we're able to keep it this close, the better chance we have at upsetting the Buckeyes. And we have forced them to a third and five where I'm hoping we can finally get them off the field, but it's not happening. The second that we don't have success offensively, we are going to be in a ton of trouble and Wilson broke free, but they missed their extra point. So right now we're up by one. I'm going to throw it up to junior Jerry Bowman and I'm surprised he came down with it, but we might be able to get into field goal range. We just need a couple more big gains. And Jeremy Williams has to be putting the nation on notice right now because we have a chance to pull off the upset. I know Ohio State isn't ranked, but this would still be a huge result. But unfortunately, both defenses are struggling a ton and this has to be intercepted. I don't understand how Nick Wilson keeps catching these, but he scored three touchdowns on us and on the two-point conversion, they need to pick this up to tie it up and they do. We're just gonna keep going back to the option and we might as well pitch it to Greg Allen, the sophomore, our wide receiver, and he got around a few people, which was a part of the drive that would lead to the go-ahead touchdown. I just wanna get the Buckeyes off the field one time and we're finally going to do it and we're one quarter away from pulling it off. Ideally, I'd like to run it, but they forced us to a third and long, so we're going to Clint Kirkpatrick, and how did he hang on? If we were ever not going to catch a pass, this would definitely be one I'd understand, but everyone on our team is determined to shock the world against the Buckeyes, and if Fred Howard continues to stay healthy, we're going to be good. That was an amazing block from 23, and he got another, so that's something that won't go unnoticed as we keep moving the ball down the field, and Fred Howard's close to a first, but even if we don't pick this up, we're going to be able to take a two-possession lead, and Ohio State is falling behind by 10. Even though we lost a ton of amazing seniors, this team is so good. We get the stop and that's going to seal this upset. This is probably Jeremy Williams last year with us because I'd assume he's going to have a chance to enter the NFL draft early and against Mid-Tennessee State, we won by 21. For visit week this year, I'm going to set it against Toledo. But before then, we have to take down Southern Illinois, which is never a given. And the fact that we won by 36 shows how much we've continued to improve and we destroyed Western Michigan. I figured we might fly under the radar, but we're already already ranked in the top 25, and right now we have the number one offense in the country. If we can go undefeated, we'll probably make the playoffs, and by the size of this crowd, we're starting to have some bandwagons. I thought we might take a step back compared to our previous season, but we're doing much better, and we would have gotten the stop there, but they hit us with pass interference. But that's such a dumb call, because by the time he got hit, the ball was way past him. Luckily for us, Toledo would miss their field goal, and now we're going to score a touchdown, but now that we're ranked, every team in our conference is going to give us their toughest game, and that should have been picked. I don't like how the this has started out because there's so many different things that are not going our way, but I have to remember that it's still early in the game and we're not going to dominate versus every team. On third and 12, I'm surprised at how aggressive they're being, but they sent a blitz in, so I knew we would try to take the top off of their defense and it worked. Clint Kirkpatrick is only a 
sophomore. So we're going to have him for a few more years and they're dropping that ball. But as the game goes on, our lead has stayed at seven and we need to pick up this fourth and eight. Toledo has given us a good fight and I'm not sure if that's going to impress the visiting recruits today. But since we're only allowed to go after three stars, it's not like we're trying to attract the top talents and let's get the interception. Don't tell me the refs are bailing them out for the second time. And thankfully this pass interference is on them. So from there, we'd be able to just finish it out. And Jeremy Williams is trying to get his name into the Heisman race. He's juking players out and fighting for as many yards as he can get. And I'm even padding his stats at the end, hoping it puts the nation on notice. He finished with six touchdowns, which is incredible. And it makes you wonder where we would be if we never put him in over Malik Johnson. All of the recruits that we wanted are starting to flood in, as you'll see that Chris Thompson has committed to Kent State. And we also have a 1,000 point lead on all three of these players. Even though we can only go after three star recruits, I really want a top 35 class. And I'm expecting our success to continue in these next two MAC conference games as we take down the Red Hawks and versus Ohio, we beat them by 28. Cornerback Cortez Brown, even one player of the week with three interceptions. And I wish that Jeremy Williams could get into the Heisman race because he's gotten us up to this number 10 spot. Eastern Michigan normally isn't good, but this year they're sitting at five and two. And I was a little bit worried, but we've seemed to separate ourselves from the rest of the MAC besides the Bobcats. And we might as well just continue to sim throughout the year if we're going to dominate. But it's NCAA football, so something will probably go wrong. And I literally just called that. Our rivals Bowling Green rushed all over us at home. And with that one loss, we're out of the 12 team playoffs. And if we drop another one, we're not going to win our division in the MAC. Akron's one and nine, though, so we should pound our close rivals, and we do. So all that's left is this game against Buffalo. And I really don't see us dropping it, so I am going to sim it, which was the right move. The race was closer than I would have liked, but we've clinched the MAC championship, and our quarterback never got any respect from the Heisman race. I think it's because he got hurt mid year or something because these stats aren't adding up. And how did I not notice that he was not our starter versus Bowling Green? I didn't see the injury logo on him, so I thought he was healthy for the rest of the year, but he has a torn shoulder, and Jeremy Williams is out for the season. That means our starting quarterback is now freshman Josh Davis, and we still have what it takes to beat Ball State, but if we make the 12-team playoffs, we're in trouble. From what I've seen so far, Josh Davis fits in decently nicely, as he does have some speed on him, and approaching halftime, we do have a lead, but it's only nine, so there's no guarantee we win the championship. Ideally, I'd love to finish the second quarter with another touchdown, because that would make our lead a lot bigger, but it's time to see if junior kicker TJ Mays can hit it from 56 and this one is not making it. Without our starting quarterback, this season feels like it's already over even though it's not, but maybe Jeremy Williams will come back for a senior season to try and finish business since he couldn't do it this year. On third and goal, I just want to get into the end zone. They've sent a blitz at Josh Davis and he is going to evade the pressure and from there we'd run away with it because Ball State couldn't score. So we've gotten our second straight conference championship and now it's time to see if we made the playoffs, but I wouldn't blame the committee if they don't put us in. We did everything that we could, but Iowa beat Ohio State and jumped us. So junior Fred Howard isn't going to make his first college football playoffs. And it's a good thing that all of our best performers are coming back next season. I know for a fact we would have scored more than Iowa did in their first round matchup, but instead we have to play against Clemson and we'll see if we can win this bowl game. But with our backup quarterback out there and it raining this hard, it's not looking good. It's so disappointing. We were ranked number 12 in the coaches poll, but when it came to the college football poll, we weren't. And it was a close call between us and Iowa and all of them. We were either 12 or 13. We're going to find Marcelo Robinson on this play and he's going to break free, which will get us back within 10 on Clemson. But that was the closest that we'd ever get is we are going to lose this one by a lot. Josh Davis wasn't prepared for a 95 overall defense throwing three picks. And it honestly hasn't taken us very long to start having success. But I'm afraid if Jeremy Williams declares for the draft, we're in trouble and he's a first round pick. We're also losing this guard to Ball State and Wesley Estes and Yusuf Means are some notable graduates. But I'm going to try to get Jeremy Williams to stay. And I'm going to promise that he'll win the Heisman Trophy, but he still wants to leave. It pains me to see, but he went in the third round along with Yusuf Means, and I'm hoping we signed a top 35 class as we finished up here at number 31. It took us a while to get it going, but I've completed half of the challenges now, and there's a lot of players in here that we're going to have to wait on to develop. With two high overall coordinators, we should see a lot of progression, and the one player I really wanted to see growth on was Josh Davis, who is up to an 85 overall. Now that we've gotten a top 35 class and a lot of players that should develop, it is time to put all of my coaching points into game management, and I'm expecting us to go undefeated besides maybe losing to Kentucky. We're single-handedly carrying the MAC conference to a better rating, and even though everything is trending upwards, I can still only go after three-star recruits. I'm really surprised that we're projected to be a top 20 team, but we've gotten up to an 86 overall, and even the top programs aren't that good anymore, as the highest one I'm seeing is a 91 from Ohio State and Clemson. It's a long shot, but we might be able to win multiple playoff games, and we are far superior to Youngstown State now, which means we should have won by 
by even more. Apparently, we went through three different quarterbacks, but none of them are on the injury report, and we're actually the favorites going into the Kentucky game, even though it's on the road at Kroger Field. I'm not sure what to think of Josh Davis, but on this first possession, he is going to just avoid getting sacked, and now he's going to try to throw it deep. There's no way we scored a touchdown there, but it all panned out in our favor, and now we're going for the sack, but Dunbar broke the press, so they are going to get a huge play on us. I have to remember I'm using a Mac defense, so I can't play as aggressive as I want to, and we need to make a tackle. We forced the fumble, but they picked it up in the end zone, and they deserve to miss the extra point. Now we have to respond back with a touchdown ourselves. Josh Davis is able to escape the pressure. This one is going to go for another first down, and Fred Howard stayed healthy all of last year, so I'm hoping he can do the same thing in his senior season. Third and five. They have somebody open underneath on the dragon. I couldn't get over to make an interception on it. They are going to break the tackle as well, so it seems like nobody's going to be able to get a defensive stop, and our defensive line just has to be better at getting in pressure. They're going to try to run with the quarterback, but it didn't work, so it's third and short, and they faked us out with the read option. On the two-point conversion, trying to tie it up, they're going with the run again, and we hit them, but they're still going to break at least one of them. So it took some extra effort, but we were able to bring them down, and they sent almost no pressure. If you're going to give that much time to Josh Davis, we're going to complete it. And offensively, this team shouldn't have any issues. We have an opportunity to go deep to Allen, and they're not going to make a play. So we're going to score extremely quick on the Wildcats, and they've moved it down the field on us pretty fast as well. This has been ridiculous, and that throw was on the money. So defense has been completely non-existent, and if we want to do anything else with this team besides win the MAC, we're going to have to figure it out. But at least for now, we have a two-point lead over Kentucky. And to start the third quarter, I want to go up to Jerry Bowman deep. There is one guy on him, and he just left him for whatever reason. I don't know why, but that's going to give us a free touchdown, even on Heisman. And I've been noticing more and more that sometimes this back safety just makes the wrong play. We have gotten Kentucky to a third and 10, though, so that could be historic if we're able to hold him, and that would have been picked. But our cornerback just missed the ball, and thankfully we were able to force it out. If I've learned anything from this game, it's that our offense is completely awesome. But when it comes to the defensive side of things, we're going to need some work. I think it's smart to go for the two-point conversion to get a three-possession lead. And this was the one game on our schedule I was worried we wouldn't win, so we should go undefeated in the regular season, and Josh Davis is still fighting. He had an incredible game with six touchdowns, and we put up 50 points on my favorite team. Even though I can't scout any of these players to see what their true overalls are, I'm trying really hard with recruiting, and that's because we have 15 seniors, so we're going to lose a lot of talent, but I went all in on us having success on the field instead of off it, and I'm ready to sim a few weeks until we play against number 25 Miami, Ohio. I don't know if they'll still be ranked by then, but I'm hoping that they are, and I am so confident that we're going to beat all these opponents, but Toledo took us down. On the road, once again, we started three different quarterbacks, and nobody's on the injury report, so I don't know why we keep doing that. We would have been so good over the past two seasons if it weren't for these injuries, but we can redeem ourselves against number seven, Miami, Ohio, and they're actually good as they beat number 12, Utah, on the road. It also makes for a perfect visit week, and our conference prestige has moved up to number six. Other teams in our division are having good years, so we can't lose again, and we might be the favorites on paper, but that doesn't guarantee that we'll come out on top, so let's take care of business in Dick Stadium. An early third and 12 is a tad bit concerning, but they went with man-to-man -man coverage, and I just couldn't get a throw out. We struggled to get defensive stops against Kentucky, so I'm expecting the same to be true today. And here in the third quarter, we are already down 10-0 to with the chance that we could be going down by even more. We need this pick, though, but because we didn't get it, they're going to go up 13-0. to And I could not tell you why this offense is struggling, because we have so many dudes on it that are monsters. Josh Davis is certainly no Jeremy Williams, but he still does a decent job. He's evading the pressure on this play, and we might have a touchdown if he can juke out this one defender, but he's got to be tired, and Fred Howard is still healthy. Our defense also instantly forced an interception, so that is great news for us. And it is third and seven where they're just going with a run, so we really should have gotten the stop there. Come on. I wanted to get away with just sending three players at them, but I think we're going to have to start sending five instead. And I thought they might go for it on fourth and one, but they're kicking the field goal. We need to end this first half with a touchdown, and they went with man-to-man -man press on the left and right side of the field. So Marcelo Robinson makes a sighting, and why are they doing the same thing again? We're going to go back to him, and this one's intercepted. It is all my fault if we lose this game. Bad read after bad read. They're about to get in field goal range as well, and they're getting it off just in time, but it looks a bit short. That's great to see right before the half, but it's starting to make sense why they're the number seven team, because they're so well coached and we can't break their defense. It's another third and long, and they just drop everyone back in the coverage, so we need the offensive line to give us plenty of time. That is finally the play that's going to go for a big gain, and that makes our fans very happy, but we still got to reach the end zone, and we should rely on Howard. Instead, though, we went with the five wide and 
and Josh Davis notice that nobody's on the left side of the field because they all follow their men and that should result in a touchdown. We just got to get the two-point conversion now and Howard does. So this one's going to come down to the wire and this stadium is so cool. I've enjoyed rebuilding these smaller schools recently because they have something unique about them and we got them to a third and 29. So obviously they weren't picking it up. And if we could just end this drive with a touchdown, we would really separate ourselves as Davis's run all the way for it. Third and five now for the Red Hawks. They don't have anything open. I'm guarding it all and this needs to be intercepted. We had somebody right there and I don't know why they're doing the onside kick because they still have all three of their timeouts and they can get it back. I don't even want to go for the run again because they've lit it up and they might have just gotten the defensive stop that they needed. We need this long third and 18. I don't think we're going to pick it up. Davis rolls out though. He finds Williams and that goes for the first down. He has iced the game to put us in the win column against the number seven team in the country and I am relieved that we were able to get this result. That'll get us back inside the top 25 but Akron and Bowling Green are still undefeated in conference play and I'm surprised we've only gotten two recruits so far but now we need to take care of business on the road at Ohio and we did by a ton. I'm just waiting to see if Josh Davis can get in the Heisman race because he's one of the top passers in the country and we are right back into college football playoff contention but ever since that loss to Toledo I'm very nervous about some of these other games and at least we're slowly starting to pick up some more recruits but now it's time for the final stretch and Bowling Green is also 5-1 and one. so to win our division in the MAC, we have to beat our rivals. It's at their place so this could be tough and we're starting off with the ball where Josh Davis has led us all the way down the field but he's going to need to throw it more accurate than that and on this play he finally does. We've also gotten them to a third and long early on and they went with a run so we have an opportunity to be cruising through this game. We just need to pick up a couple more first downs and that will lead to us going up 14 to 0 early on against Bowling Green. I'm not too sure how I feel about this team. Alexander is not getting in any pressure but they also aren't getting the ball far enough and I think our defense is really going to cost us against good opponents but Josh Davis sees Marcelo Robertson just running by number 24 and that's going to lead to another score. How this game is going is how I expect all of our games in MAC conference play to go in the future. We're going to get an interception and as of right now they have zero total yards while we have over 200 and it's getting worse. I want Josh Davis to have a shot at the Heisman so I'm going to continue to score tons of touchdowns and Bowling Green's number 24 might be the worst cornerback we've ever played. He's given up four touchdowns already and it looks like he's about to give up a fifth and Marcelo Robinson believe it or not has all five of them which is a school record. Going into this game I saw that Bowling Green was only a 68 overall so I knew we'd probably end up destroying them but I didn't think it'd get this bad this quick and I don't know what it is about number 24 but he just doesn't know how to cover Marcelo Robertson. He has run by him for like the fifth time today and that's going to lead to another long touchdown. It took them all game but they've finally decided to make a change and Marcelo Robertson is still cooking their defense but it was underthrown. So unfortunately for him he's probably not going to get a touchdown on this drive but Josh Davis now is a school record of eight but by the start of the fourth quarter our backup quarterback is in and I can't believe how easy this is. Our rivals just got embarrassed and I was just sitting back throwing darts I wasn't even trying. This game alone has made Marcelo Robinson a highly touted prospect and right now we're leading the country in passing yards but surprisingly Iowa's receiver is leading the country in that. I never thought I'd see the day where a Hawkeye led the country in an offensive stat but we still don't have anybody in the Heisman race and I think it's because we had that one loss early in the year. I want Miami Ohio to make the playoffs too but I think they're going to fall a bit short and the other division in the MAC is just terrible. We should win these final two games by a sizable margin and against Akron we put up 48 so our offense has officially figured it out and let's end the regular season the right way. Josh Davis had a perfect game going for six touchdowns but the Heisman watch list isn't showing him any love. The leading quarterback has 29 touchdowns while he leads the country in passing yards and has 48 passing touchdowns with only eight interceptions. Next up on our schedule is the MAC championship and we have the number one offense with the number two defense but we have played a much easier schedule at least compared to all of the other good power five teams. I'd say that's probably why we're not getting the love that we deserve and we're going to get some blocks here for Davis to run it in but he was marked a bit short so it took another play. Third and nine they're going with what looks like a wide receiver screen and there's no way they're getting it out. So I think like the last conference game we played we're going to run away with this one as it's just too easy for Josh Davis to find the open man. He's already broken Williams school passing record and we're about to score another touchdown in the first quarter with a very tight throw. I'm going to be very interested to see how our defense does against other power five teams because every so often it's all right but I would say stopping Central Michigan isn't something that's impressive but they should know better than the press Marcelo Robinson and I'm just going to throw it up to him. He is not getting away from that corner but he still catches it. It's honestly just too easy for us. They're a 68 overall team on paper and Marcelo Robinson is setting record after record too. What's crazy is I'm not even running four verticals but imagine the damage I'd do if I did that and in this 
this situation, we have got to get our feet in bounds. I'm going to give Jerry Bowman a chance to make up for it, and that slant route just destroyed that corner. So at the end of the day, we're obviously going to win this game, and Josh Davis just keeps piling on touchdowns. When we play against bigger schools, I'm not expecting him to be our main source of offense, but we're not leaning on Fred Howard until we need to. And there's another MAC championship for Kent State. Josh Davis finished with five total touchdowns, and we're there with the trophy once again, but he's not in the running for the Heisman Trophy, so it's no surprise he wasn't a finalist in votes. He was incredible, but he only won the O'Brien Award, and it's probably because he wasn't as good of a rusher as our last QB, but Jerry Bowman and Marcelo Robinson went crazy. For our first round matchup in the playoffs, we're gonna have to go against USC, and I'm hoping that they still haven't figured out how to play defense. It's only an 83 overall, so I'm assuming they haven't, and since we made the playoffs, we knocked it off the challenge list. To be honest, we should have made it last year, but I'm glad we're getting to host our opening game, and I have no idea if we can keep up with a Big Ten school, but we're about to find out, and our defensive line is already terrible, but we are gonna knock it away, and that's a defensive stop on their first possession. USC is already running press early on, so they're disrespecting Marcelo Robertson, and my game plan going into this one is to run the ball with Fred Howard all over the Trojans, but anytime that they press us, we are gonna have to take advantage of it, and this is gonna be easy. I can already tell that they did not come prepared to stop the run with Fred Howard. He's gotta stay healthy, but we've saved him all year to use him in one of these games, and he's not making it. It's fourth and inches, and we're gonna have to hand it off again, but Fred Howard got the job done, and then we forced an interception on defense, so we're sitting pretty, except now it is third and 16, and are they really not guarding Fred Howard? That's a first down. He fumbled it though. Oh my gosh, we're going to give it back. That is not how we should have ended the first quarter. And maybe we need to stop feeding him so much. I just want to limit possessions our defense is on the field because I know it can be rough. But so far, they have done a fine job. And I know that the blitz is coming in. But the question is, can we pick it up? And we did. I had enough time to find Allen over the top of the defense. And does he have the speed now? It's probably good that happened though because we can end the first half with the ball. And I am going to slide at the one because I don't want the Trojans to have time to march down the field and score on us. Even if we're technically not the underdog. I still operate like we are, and I should have read that pitch better. That was such a bad defensive play by Meek. Someone make a tackle, please. We're so lucky that USC's only gotten field goals, but now we're on third and 10, so we have to let our quarterback that should have been in the Heisman race cook, and he is going to break one of these sacks, but he is just stuck in there, and what is happening? From there, it took the Trojans two plays to score a touchdown, and they get the two-pointer. So up until now, we had control of this game, and now it's just going badly. Josh Davis hasn't had to throw it much, so he's not warmed up, and if we're able to escape this one in future playoff matchups, I want to use our high-powered offense. Fred Howard is a high overall player, so we can feed him if we need to, but I don't like how the game tempo has gone for us, and they've sent in a blitz, so we need Davis to roll out and make a good throw. It is third and 11, and they're probably just going to drop everybody back into coverage, so we're going to need a few extra. And going for it here is super risky, but I'm going to take our tight end, and what a play from him to catch that touchdown. Now their quarterback's trying to scramble, and Pierce makes the sack. The effort from him on this play is not going to get overlooked. He got up from that and made the tackle. So we greatly appreciate him and now we're going to get even more pressure in. Fourth and 16 and they're almost better off punting it here but they're going deep with the four verticals and Valentine just got cooked. So they have gotten it past midfield on us and on second and 12 I'm nervous that they're going to pick something big up as they have a wide open receiver. We did best when we sent four players at them but they were prepared and of course they're going to hit us with a late hit. To be entirely fair this was definitely roughing the passer as we hit him super late but it's put USC in a first and goal situation and they they just ran an RPO on us. If they do score a touchdown, I want to have enough time to go down the field and get a field goal. And they're taking timeouts for us, so they're making it easier on us as their quarterback keeps trying to scramble. He fumbled the football. Please, please pick this up. Bullock's extra effort on this tackle forced the ball out, and what used to be the worst team in college football is going on to the quarterfinals. I think we're going to really struggle with Clemson, but what's important is that we've made it this far, and I've upgraded myself to be a really good head coach. Last year, the Tigers made Josh Davis look terrible in our bowl game, but he has a chance to to get revenge today, and we've already forced them into a third and five where I'm going to send in a blitz, but they're going to complete the pass. This time, I'm going to give them even less time, and it didn't work out. Their quarterback somehow threw it, and Allen sheds the tackle, which is going to lead to an early touchdown. I don't know what Pete Elbert is on, but he completed this pass backwards, and that's the complete opposite of the start I was looking for, but at least we're running it decently. I wasn't sure if we'd be able to, but passing is not a good option for us, because I remember what they did to Josh Davis last year, and we're going to pitch it on on 
the option to Allen who's going to take it in. We failed to get a lot of third and short stops, but maybe this is the time that we do, and it's not. Allen is going to go for a second touchdown of the day if Jaquise Brown can't make the tackle, and he did. But I'm starting to realize that we cannot play aggressively on defense, and it might not be the worst idea in the world to try and limit possessions because so far Clemson's offense has looked even better. On third and five, we are going to go with a halfback screen, and they almost picked it. And I really don't want to go for it in this situation, but we are anyways, and thankfully, Allen catches it. Greg Allen is someone that we have not used that much, but now he's gone out and made massive plays for us. And since I've learned from previous mistakes, we're going a lot less aggressive on this third down, and they're still going to pick it up. However, apparently his foot didn't get in bounds, and if we could make sure that this was the final drive of the half, we would be sitting pretty. No matter what, we have to make sure that we get at least a field goal out of this one, but we could get a touchdown. But since I accidentally chewed the clock for so long, I think we're going to be stuck going for the field goal, and please don't intercept that. Come on. The refs are saying his feet are not in bounds, and I'm not giving them a chance to challenge it because we have a three-point lead at the half now and we get ball to start the third quarter. I'm going to try to go to this corner route and it's going to be off the marks. Clemson's a good team and one mistake against them could ruin our chances of winning, but our defense has been holding it down and now I'm playing a lot smarter by chewing through as much clock as possible, but we still have to make some big plays and on third and six, we might have to just force it into this window where Robertson comes away with it. Josh Davis threw a lot of picks last year, but this year he's been very careful with the ball and because of that, to end the third quarter, we are going to go up by 10. By the way this game started, I would not have considered our defense to be the potential difference maker, but they got it to Allen on that pitch, and this one player's killed us. He's the only reason that Clemson's been able to score a ton of points, and come on, we've got to be better at tackling in those situations. And I feel like the game's trying to keep them in it, as our defensive line just isn't that good. If we're going to win, it's because we've rushed for a few first downs, but we mixed in a little bit of a pass, and Davis is going to avoid the sack while throwing for the first down. And he is playing out of his mind right now, because there's no way that you have any answer to stopping that. He's unpredictable, and Clemson's going to have to start burning timeouts, so it's time to depend on our offensive line to get a couple of good blocks, and we just need one yard with Fred Howard on this third and one, which we're going to get. We're moving on. I never expected us to make the semifinals, but I guess we have an actual shot at the championship, and our next opponent is one of these two teams. The score makes it look a lot closer than it ever was, and we have the Hurricanes in our next game, who are also an 86 overall team, but they're ranked number three. To be honest, I think we match up well with them, and we should have gotten that third down stop, but I'm sure there will be plenty of other chances throughout this game to do it, and with this throw, that doesn't look like a catch. Even the refs want to challenge it, and in the review, we should see that his foot did not get in bounds, so they overturned the call, and they've gotten us to a third and long early on, but we're going to go back to running it, and Jerry Bowman's going to get us the first, plus a little bit more. It is key that we control the tempo of this game, and freshman Chris Thompson is in right now, so he has a chance to get the first touchdown of the day, and he won't make it. It's unfortunate, but Fred Howard will get it instead, and after forcing a fumble along with having another very long drive. We have an opportunity to increase our lead on Miami, but on third and goal, I'm not sure Fred Howard's going to make it all the way to the end zone. It's going to be close. And that little burst of acceleration did the trick, but I think Miami's going to respond. Our defense has certainly overperformed compared to what I expected them to do. So I can't be upset at them if they do give up a touchdown here, but I would love to get the stop and come on, we just got to sack them and their quarterback breaks one tackle. But Jeremy Thomas couldn't reach the end zone and on the third down, he is not going to make it either. That could make a major difference in this game because every point is so valuable. So we're going for even more to end the first half. And I did have the blocks to get a throw off, but it's not going to get close to Bowman. I'm trying to make an effort to get us into the championship, but Miami would score a touchdown in the third quarter. And if we don't pick up this third and nine, they're going to get the ball back again. But Williams holds on. And now we go right back defeating Fred Howard up the middle. That'll eventually take it to the fourth quarter. And I'm going to try to get a little tricky here by slipping it to our backup on the halfback screen, but they were all over Thompson. So we're probably better off going for the field goal with our senior and it's down the middle. It is time for our defense to clutch up here on third and two, but Joey Carr breaks one tackle. We missed another with him, and I think he has the speed to take this to the crib. What a terrible defensive play. I mean, we're fortunate that we still control our destiny, but this Miami defense has been really, really solid, and I was scared to make a read there, so I just took a sack, but I should have, and now we're going deep with it being way off target. I cannot believe how quickly things have changed, but if we pin them back with this punt, we might be able to get it back, and that one bounced far. I know they're passing it on third and two, but the question question is, will we get the blitz in in time? And that was a very risky call, but it might get us a spot in the championship as now we have very good field positioning and Miami is getting aggressive because they really want to get a stop on us, but they're not going to get the blitz in and Allen will take it for six. I would have never imagined our defense getting us in this position, but it is fourth and four and we couldn't get to the quarterback. So Jeremy Thomas has kept Miami's hopes open for at least a little bit, but we were prepared to stop him scrambling and on third and 13, they're going inbounds. And as long as we make the tackle here, the clock's just going to continue to tick and there's about 
20 seconds left now. We just got to stop him from scrambling. Brown is not going to make the tackle. Newton won't either. And can we please just put Miami and Jeremy Thomas out of this game? They're already in Hail Mary formation, even with seven seconds left. And my goal is to not give them enough time to get the throw off, but we didn't get our five guys in. And this is looking very close. Please knock it away. Oh my gosh. Kent State is somehow making the championship. And I'm not scared of either of our potential opponents. Utah dominated Stanford though, so maybe I should be. And they only have one loss this season while also having the Heisman winning quarterback. It's the four seed versus the seven seed in the championship. And Utah's the team that lost to Miami, Ohio. That makes me feel even better about this. And let's go get Kent State a national championship. It's here in Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And they elected to receive the ball first, so you can tell that they are confident in their offense. And that's why we're going to try to limit possessions because they do have the Heisman winner, like I said, and they are going deep on us already for a touchdown. Wow. That literally took John Hobbs like one minute. And our style of things is going to be much, much slower as Howard's just going to run it. By the end of the first quarter, we still haven't scored, but it's also still our first drive and we are inside the red zone on Utah. On a third and five, we are going to mix it up with a little bit of a pass. And I don't even know who Hartman is, but he came onto the field to make one play for us. And now we have got to score. Fred Howard has done everything and there we go. But the real question will be, can we stop this Utah passing attack? And that is going to be another amazing throw. Someone bring down Hamby. I might as well try sending a blitz at him and see if that works as this is almost intercepted, but we're going to try it again on third and two. And we didn't get in to stop him. He saw it coming the entire way and he's rushing for a touchdown. It seems like stopping him is going to be extremely tough. And I'm going for the deep post shot, hoping Utah doesn't play it, but I'm debating on trying to turn this into a shootout and see whose defense can stop who's first because we can score on this third and nine. They're actually only handing it off so we can get them off the field. And you best believe I'm taking a timeout because we have an opportunity to get even more points before the half, especially if they're going to press our best receivers. We're going to take some deep shots down the field and they keep doing it. So we might as well give it another shot. Marcelo Robinson has run by number 45 and there we go. That should be a touchdown, but they are challenging it. And he definitely got a foot, even two in here. Obviously that touchdown would end up standing. And now the second half can be full of us trying to milk the clock. To get to this point, we have played every team in the playoffs the exact same way. And it is a much different style than what the rest of the MAC conference saw, but it's kept us in games that we might not be otherwise. And I am going for the touchdown to Bowman, which we're getting. That puts us up by two possessions, but you know Utah is starting to get a little bit worried and we cannot miss tackles there. Going into the fourth, we might be up by 14, but within an instant, they could get it back within a possession and I think they will. Unless we get a sack here, it is not looking too good for us, but we are going to. And the Heisman winning quarterback is technically struggling, though he hasn't had many opportunities to succeed and there it is. Ideally, he will never have a chance to see the ball again and we might be able to go deep. Please get your feet in. And that's exactly what Greg Allen has done for us as Howard's now going to take the handoff and he's going to get the outer edge as well and the first. This entire season has all been on our strategy and it's so close to paying off as Howard's going to go to the two or three. As long as we don't fumble it, no matter what, we're about to go up by two possessions and the Utes would score quick, but we still can get this onside kick and that will be enough for us to seal the game. At one point, we were the worst team in college football, but now we are national champions and I didn't expect the rebuild to end this year, but we had a talented team with multiple first rounders and it's unfortunate that I couldn't complete all six challenges, but that means I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter. And if anyone responds to you that's not me with a verified check mark in my name, it is a bot comment. I contact giveaway winners through Twitter or Instagram, and if you want to watch another rebuild that's similar to this one, check out this playlist.